right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you guys are feeling successful with your ability to multiply with decimals. We're going to change it up just a little bit, and we're going to look at what our product's going to look like if we have zeros in the original problem, because it changes it quite, quite a little bit. We're still going to follow the same rules as our floating green and pink cloud tell us there, but we're just going to make sure to follow the rules to a T. Okay, so we're going to do some practice problems with this. Just follow along as I go through it. I don't think there'll be any issues, but I just want to make sure. Okay, so again, this is section 4.8, zeros in the product. So as I said, we're going to solve this problem following the same rules as we did the previous day when we were multiplying. We're going to forget about those decimals. We're going to pretend like they aren't even there. And I'm simply going to solve this problem. Not a difficult problem, but it is a problem nonetheless. This problem is 7 hundredths times 2 tenths. I can do that in my head, right? 7 times 2? It's 14. It gives me a product of 14. Perfect. Whew! That was hard. Now, here's where the tricky part comes in. Put those decimals back in. Now I'm going to count up how many digits are behind my decimal. One, two, three. I have three digits that need to live behind my decimal. They need to hold the place values. But my product right now only has two. So I'm going to take and I'm going to bump my decimal three place values regardless. I'm just going to say whatever, say whatever. And I'm going to bump it three place values. One, two, three. My decimal's going to live there. Whether you like it or not, that's where my decimal's going to live. Now I have to figure out what's going to go in this place value. I need something to hold the place. What could I possibly put there? Maybe. A shark? No. Oh, maybe my pancreas. Why? Does that make sense? Oh, what about a zero? Zeros are pretty darn good at holding place values. If I put a zero there, it holds that place value, doesn't it? But it doesn't change what, they, what I just did. So the final product to my problem is 14 thousandths. Thank goodness for zeros. Phew. Let's try another one. Five hundredths times six tenths. Just as I said before, we're going to forget about these decimals. And I'm just simply going to multiply five times six. When I multiply five times six, I get a product of thirty. My next step is to count the number of digits that live behind my decimal. One, two, three. So I have to bump in three place values to make sure I have three digits that live behind my decimal. And just like we did in the previous problem, I'm going to have to add a zero. giving me a final product of 30 thousandths or 3 hundredths because that zero on the end is not necessarily needed. It doesn't change my answer. Now comes the part of the program where you do one on your own. Please try this problem independently and see how you do. Again, pretend that there are no decimals there. Solve the problem. Put the decimals back in. Four times two gives me a product of eight. Four times one gives me a product of four. Obviously, that's gonna give me zero, magic zero, 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 zero. So I don't even have to do it. 
here's my, my product. Now I count the number of place values behind the decimal in the original problem. I have one, two, three, four, five. Whoa, five digits behind the decimal. We're going to be doing some bumping here, guys. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Decimal. So all of those bumps that don't have any digits in them, I'm going to fill with a zero. So the proper way to read this final product is 48 hundred thousandths. Whoa. That's like If you were able to solve this problem successfully, I would say that you are a three on our learning scale. If you needed some assistance, if something just didn't quite make sense, give yourself a two on your learning scale. There's nothing wrong with being a two. Two means you're learning. And learning is what school is all about. Please enjoy your evening tonight with your family and friends, and I hope to see every single one of your smiling faces in class tomorrow.